Hello all you Saab freaks and welcome back to Trionic 7 for yet another Saab video. This will be the first part in a video series on how to understand OpenSID and it's probably the most requested video I've ever had. So finally we're gonna talk on how to understand those parameters that you can see in a Saab information display. So now I'll turn the camera around and point you to the information display. So let's talk some OpenSID. First things first. To be able to have OpenSID in the first place, you need a Saab using the Trionic 7 engine management system. This means you can run a Saab 9.5 from 98 to 2010, or some of the later versions of the original generation Saab 9.3. Essentially, your car must have a black DI cassette. I'm currently in my 2002 Saab 9.5 Arrow, and the 98 to 05 Saab 9.5s have their information display here. If your Saab 9.5 is of the newer facelift, that is 2006 to 2010, it will look different and the information display will be located in your instrument housing, but the same instructions apply for the most part. If you have a compatible car, you will need to enable OpenSID, because this is a feature that's turned off from factory. Essentially, OpenSID is Saab's own debugging feature that showed their engineers the car's parameters while testing, and then they switch them off before delivery. In my enabling OpenSID video that I linked down below, I will show you how I flashed the ECU to include OpenSID. So now I've started up the car so the SID is enabled and I will press both buttons minus and plus simultaneously to open the display. And the first thing you will see is the version of software I have in the ECU as well as the date. And this date doesn't necessarily mean much because you can modify it to whatever you want. And then to browse among the variables I can press plus and minus to go back and forth. And you see these numbers, those are the number of the variable and then that's the name and then there's the value of the variable. And you see there's a lot of stuff to cover here. So just to cover the basics is well enough for one video and I will talk about some more stuff in the later videos. Let's go back to variable number one. That's the RPM, and it will display you the revolutions per minute that the car is currently running at. If I give a bit of gas, you can see the RPMs going up and down. The next variable is the TENG, which is the engine temperature. That's usually variable number four and it's currently at 84 or 85 degrees Celsius. Remember that your variables might be different from what I'm seeing here. And this depends on the software you're using, but I've also changed the variables I want to see when I flashed the ECU. I will show you how to do this in a later video, because this is an advanced topic. Let's go for a drive. You might say that there's a ton of variables to see here in OpenSID. But wait till you see this. I've navigated to what is on my card, number 21, the mode value. And I make it so that it's the top of the two variables shown. Then I press and hold the set button until it starts to flash. Now I can press plus and minus. And I have eight different pages of information in my car. So I can go from zero to seven. And these are different pages of information. So I start with mode 0, and I can go to mode 1, click set again, browse around here, and those are different values. I can go back to mode, hold set, go up to number 2, and so on. So there's a lot of information to see here. And then to go back to the normal Saab display, you press minus and plus once and twice. And now we're back to the standard factory SID information. The first thing to look for is the lambda value. And it will show you the car's short-term fuel trim. And it's usually variable number two. This number will jump around very much because it shows how much the car compensates with fuel injection. And you want this variable to be within minus 1000 to plus 1000. If it's outside this range, you should look for things like 
vacuum leaks, you should look for things like bad O2 sensors or anything that can change the O2 regulation in your car. A related variable is the long-term fuel trim or the adaptive multiplicative trim. And that's the variable called AMUL, number 26 in my car. This is essentially the same thing as the short-term fuel trim or lambda value, but it's averaged over a long time. And this will only update every few minutes when you drive. Generally, you want this value to be within plus and minus 500. AMUL and lambda show you the fuel correction in one hundredths of a percent. So here we have an AMUL of minus 182, which means it is removing 1.82% of fuel if compared to the standard lambda tables. And 1% is nothing to be worried about. If your car is removing more fuel or adding more fuel than 5%, then you need to again look for vacuum leaks and bad O2 sensors and so on. The next variable to check is the air mass request and actual air mass. Variable number 13, MREQ, is the amount of air that the software requests. And M air is the actual air mass that is being measured by the mass airflow sensor. These should be very similar, and if they're not, you have a problem somewhere that the car is getting too little or too much air. If I floor my car in third gear, it will usually jump up to around 1100 milligrams of air mass request. And shortly thereafter, the turbo should spool up and follow with the actual measured airflow. Let's look at what happens when I floor it. You want the measured air mass to stay within 50 of the requested air mass. Otherwise, you have a problem with either vacuum leaks or maybe a bad turbo. One of my personal favorites of OpenSID is that it can tell you right away if there are any fault codes stored in the ECU. This means that if you get a check engine light or something similar, you can go into OpenSID and check the fault codes. Here, number 9 is the NERR value, which is currently at zero. If a diagnostic fault code is found, you can check its value by going to the FCOD value. My car has no fault code stored, but if you see a four digit number here in the FCOD value, you take this number and you convert it to hexadecimal and then you add a P in the front. And that will be the standard OBD2 fault code. You can then take this fault code and ask either Google or one of the Saab forums. Here are two variables that can be very useful. Number 19, TSTA, is the time it takes to start up the engine. And this is shown in one thousandths of a second. So 1725 means that it took 1.725 seconds to crank the engine. And this is quite a long time, but it has to do with it being a cold start and the battery was slightly weak. If the Saab ECU detects some kind of problem, it might go into limp mode, which means that it won't be able to drive very fast, but it can at least limp home without problem. It can be slightly hard to f understand that you actually are in limp mode. You might think there's some kind of problem with your car being slow, and Saab doesn't really indicate we are in limp mode, unless we have open SID, in which case limp will go to a non-zero value. Here is a little teaser for what we will see in the next videos. When I flashed my ECU, I set variable 12 to actually be a boost gauge. This is not included from the stock open SID, but I added it when flashing. The number to the right here is the boost pressure in thousands of a bar. I'm currently driving slowly, which means it's in the negatives, but as soon as I give some gas, you can see the boost going up quickly. So the Saab actually has a built-in boost gauge, which is quite amazing. So thank you very much for watching this first part in the Trionic 7 Open SID video series. We have a lot of stuff to cover, so make sure to write in the comments below if you have anything special you want to learn about, or if you want me to explain something. 
follow us on social media. As always, we are on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit and Instagram. And I will see you in the next Saab video. Bye bye.